In this video, I'm going to show you how you can easily hand pollinate your Phalaenopsis orchid, grow a seed pod and potentially grow your own moth orchid combinations. Make sure you stick around. Guys, welcome back to another video. My name's Alex and if this is your first time here and you love gardening, ornamental plant care, DIY and self-sufficiency, then make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you don't miss a single thing. So growing your own Phalaenopsis from seed can be really tricky and pretty hard to do and we'll talk about that at the end of the video so stick around. That might be a deciding factor whether you want to bother to do it or not to waste your plant's energy growing a big fat seed pod but it might make you on the other hand even more excited like it has done me and you can't wait to start trying to make your own flower combination. So we'll talk about that at the end of the video. So the first thing you're going to need is a moth orchid or a phalaenopsis orchid and at least a couple of flowers. You're going to need a flower for taking the pollen from and you're going to need a flower to transfer that pollen. You're also going to need a toothpick little tiny toothpick for collecting that pollen. Paint the end black with a marker pen like I have done. It'll just help you to see better what you're doing. So I'm gonna plan to pollinate this lovely purple Phalaenopsis with this lovely white version we've got here with these gorgeous giant flowers. Be really interesting to see what combinations we can get. Don't forget, it's gonna be a big roulette wheel of genetics. We'll get thousands and thousands of seeds from a seed pod. So we're gonna have potentially, if we're, if we're lucky and we get this right, hundreds of offspring which could all exhibit different genetic qualities from its parent plants and the possibilities are endless. And that's why growing your own Phalaenopsis from seed, it's gotta be one of the most fun, interesting hobbies out there, apart from keeping carnivorous plants that will always be on top. So let's jump right in and we're going to transfer some pollen from this white one because it's already got a seed pod and you don't want more than one seed pod on one plant. The plant puts a lot of energy to make that seed pod. So you wanted to leave it with just one seed pod per orchid. So we're going to take some pollen from this nice white Phalaenopsis. We're going to transfer it to this beautiful purple one. Let's get in and do that. At the end, we'll talk more about what you need to keep in mind, what you need to plan if this is what you want to do. So if you look at one of your Phalaenopsis flowers straight on, you'll see these two, what looks like two little eyes. And you'll notice that underneath the skin, it looks like there's a little bit of yellow there. Well, that's the pollen sac. If you just be gentle with your toothpick, you can see this looks like to be a strip of tape there. Can you see that strip of tape? Oh look how that's just come off just like that. You can see that how it's just stuck immediately to the toothpick. That toothpick would have been a little insect. I don't know what insect would be in the wild that it would have stuck to. It would have stuck to the head of the insect and if we just turn this around there you can see the two bits of pollen inside and that's what we need to transfer to our other plant. So let's get the covering off. Just need to get that little cap off and it should just shake. You should be able to just shake it off. Normally it doesn't, it comes off quite easy. If you've got a pair of tweezers, you'll get rid of it. Then you're just left with the two bits of pollen which we need to now transfer to our other orchid. So we've chosen our flower. Don't be surprised that after a few days, once it's been pollinated, that flower will start to die. So if we just bend this back, just to show you, there's a little hole just underneath there. Okay, can you see that? Under there, that's where we need to get our pollen. Let's get our pollen in there and you'll notice it's really sticky on the roof inside. Look, see how it's nearly stuck, stuck to it. Let's 
Try again. Oh, really sticky. But he doesn't want to let go. We only need one to stick. We don't need both of them. So we've got one in, but just to make sure we get a score, I want to get both in. It's proving pretty difficult trying to record this as well. There. So this one's pollinated now. We'll notice this in a few days start drying up. Excellent, so we're done. This little flower just got knocked up and it's going to take about four months before that seed pod is finally mature and ready for planting. What you're going to notice now in the next day or two, this flower is going to shrivel up and start to die. And then you'll notice the little stem, what the flower's connected to, will start swelling and it'll slowly keep swelling until it turns into a lovely big fat plump seed pod as you see on our other orchids. Be sure to put a label on your seed pod with the date and maybe take a photo of the flowers for your own archive so you remember in the future what pollinated that flower. So what do you need to know before you decide if you want to try and grow your own orchids from seed? Orchids, they lack an endosperm. If you think of a normal seed, for instance, like a pea seed, most of that seed isn't the actual embryo. The embryo is super tiny. Most of that around that pea seed will be its food reserves for when that seed starts growing. And where orchids don't have that. It's just a little embryo with no food reserves, nothing to feed and nourish it. And in the wild, they'll rely on a symbiotic relationship with a fungus that would supply their food, help that little seed grow. So how do we do it then? Who oh, are not living in them tropical conditions? Well, we have to do it in vitro using a process called tissue culture, something I've been wanting to get into for years. And I just got all my supplies ready. So if you want to grow your own orchids from seed, Go and read up a bit about tissue culture. I'll put some links in the description where I've learnt most of what I need to know. I have no practical knowledge right now. It's all just up here. And you know what that means. There's always going to be a lot of mistakes, but there's nice forums and I'll put all the links in for you in the description where you can get a lot of help from the community and learn how to do it. But basically the process is that we'll need to sterilize the seed and then plant them in a aseptic condition, basically a sterile little jar where it'll grow in a jelly medium which will contain all its nutrients for that little orchid to germinate and grow. This is what we're going to be doing in a future video and I've got my supplies, I need to build a glove box because that'll help with sterilization and not getting any contaminants in them little vitreo Jar. So we'll look forward to covering that and doing some of that in the channel and try and growing some of these seed pods. If you want to know how to do it, be sure to follow them links. We'll have some videos as well out in the future, but I'm just learning this process as well. So it'll be an interesting little journey. And you've obviously got the startup cost as well, but it's an awesome little hobby if you're looking for an extra hobby to take up. So guys, let me know how you get on. Let me know in the comments, maybe you've got experience and you've come across this video. Share your knowledge with the community. That's how our community can continue to grow and learn off of each other. Guys, thanks for watching. As always, hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Hit that share button. Share this video with your friends. Help the channel to keep on growing. Help our community to keep progressing further. As always, it's been fun. It's been a pleasure. And I'll see you next time.